Greetings. My name is Martha Holden. I'm a member of the Spark of Humanity Network. Welcome to Living Mosaic, a project of the Spark of Humanity Network. The Spark of Humanity Network is based on the premise that there's a spark of humanity in each one of us, each one of us humans. Maybe you feel there's one in your dog or your cat, too, so that's, we, we don't get there yet. Um, and the Living Mosaic concept has grown out of our work with the spark of humanity. The I, this world is in a painful, difficult mess, and it's easy for people to want to deny that, hide from it, go into despair, not do anything, all sorts of dramatic postures that we're familiar with and some of us have indulged in. But our belief, our conviction, is that there is a solution. And the solution we're envisioning as a living mosaic, it could be a quilt, but we're doing mosaic, a living, breathing, living mosaic in which we each have a unique and essential role. So this program this series is an effort to explore this concept and to support you in becoming willing and interested in primarily, actually, we've discovered letting go of those habits and thoughts and practices that get in the way of your being drawn into your place within the mosaic, which is the only place you're going to be comfortable because it's where you're needed and where you have a purpose and where you belong. So we are exploring that and offering support. And so far, this is what there is. We've got a website, which somebody will flash on the screen for you. And here we go. So today, the topic is ask. You know, use words. Ask. Now, I'm going to start at the far end, at the what I have in the past considered to be a no-no, because for a number of years I was, well, I continued to supporting a young woman, and she was very young when we first met, and she was always asking, why? Why is this happening to me? Why did this happen to me? Why is he doing that? Why? And I said, don't ask why, because I was quite fed up with her saying, why? Why am I like this? Why are they like that? Why did they do that? Why? Are... I said, don't ask why. Now I see there's some blessings in asking why. There's a reason not to. That is because it uses energy that... Some of us, as we age, need to be conserving our energy and focusing it in constructive, positive directions, one of which is to be claiming our spark of humanity and moving closer to our role in the mosaic. So it uses energy, which is some of us don't have much of. Thinking about this, this past week, I've realized there there is an upside to asking why if you continue on with that and the frustration and the challenge and the fact that you can't know and the fact that you're just really spinning yourself a hole that goes deeper and deeper and deeper and gets more and more painful and frustrating. And hopefully that can get painful and frustrating enough so you sort of flip your switch and say, oh, how can I be part of the solution in this situation? How do I need to change my attitude or my behavior in order to be a constructive influence here? So those are good questions. But the frustration of asking why can hit bottom and flip us over into something constructive. So that's... That's all I have to say on don't ask why. Asking in general 
It's an interesting thing. I mean, what are we asking? Who are we asking? What are we asking for? And talking mostly from my experience, the experience of people I've talked to about this or around this, there have been times in my life when I really haven't asked, but I have been so blasted. I have been so completely at a loss without the resources, without any idea of how to continue and no capacity to go backwards. So lost all my, there was a time not to get too dramatic about it when I was sleeping with a loaded revolver under my pillow waiting for the whim to blow my brains out. And when I realized that I couldn't be sure that death was oblivion, that it was the end, that it really knocked me out of existence, I didn't know where to go from there because I was stuck being alive. And that was, that was rock bottom for me. And I didn't ask in a way that I recognize, but apparently something in me flipped over into receptive mode. It was sort of like help, but without words. So that, I think, can be a form of asking. My, my friend who used to torment me by asking why now has a, a son who's, I don't know, six or eight, and he wanted a I think, as I envision one of those computer-controlled game things that, you know, you, you have a battery probably in this, you know, tank or truck or whatever you have, and you have a thing that you twiggle things, and it, you know, whatever has the battery in it goes buzzing around. Um, and he wanted one of those. Well, my friend, it's, it's not the sort of household where you spend money to buy a kid that. So she said, just, you know, put it out there. Just ask the universe. I think it was what she said. She may have said spirit. Just ask the universe. And she, within a week, the kid's riding in the back seat of the car because he's still that age. Mommy, look, there's one right there in the free box. So she said, see, look, you know, ask. Ask, and it is provided if it's a valid, if it's a valid ask. At the end of the Spark of Humanity booklet, we have three reassurances. And the first is that in everyone, there is a spark of humanity. As we claim our sparks, which we do by getting in connection with our spark and connecting with and affirming the spark in another, that's claiming our spark. And as we claim our spark, we become agents of transformation because it seems that our connecting with the other person or person's spark or sparks strengthens their spark. It also strengthens our spark, which is another story. And it strengthens their spark, and that seems to be something that erodes their defenses and helps them begin to see how their thinking has been distorted or deranged or negative or was getting in the way of their finding their place in the mosaic, getting in the way of their being the solution. That's the first reassurance. The second one is as agents of transformation, which we are when we're doing the spark, spark practice, we are transforming the people whose sparks we are connecting with. As agents of transformation, all the resources we need are available to us. So that means, really, we don't need to ask with gritted teeth. We don't need to ask all that, all that hard, all with focus, yes? And the clear sense of our need, even actually, I usually don't know what I need, but I'm, I know when I need something. 
And so just to focus on that, if I do need it, if it's you know a few days off, if it's a walk in the sunshine, if it's a meet up with a friend, that comes. And then the third reassurance is it helps, it works best if we are willing to be transformed, which is we can ask for willingness to. So asking is a, asking even if we're not using words, even if our asking is just sort of a, a bleat or just an open willingness, draws to us what we need, whether it's comfortable and whether we like it or not, it draws to us what we need what we need in order to be drawn toward our place in the mosaic, our role in the mosaic. So, I, you know, I've got lots of time left here. So I am going to shut up, be quiet, and see if you have any questions or comments. And if you're not on the screen, you can just sort of beam them through uh, to me from whatever time and space you happen to be experiencing while you're listening to this or watching this. Asking can also I don't bleed into, can, can meld into acceptance. And we've already had one session on acceptance, but acceptance is, <laughs> you never run out of, I never run out of the need to practice acceptance, to develop a willingness to accept what is. And of course, as I said, we can ask, we can ask for the willingness. We can ask for the willingness to be willing to accept what is. It's a it's a challenging thing this journey, but it's a. In my experience, it's the liveliest, most engaging. It's what I want to be participating in in this lifetime. Um, I I think you know I think everybody. Well, if they had a taste of it, they'd want to be doing it too. So it's the that asking, accepting what is, accepting that what is in this moment right now is forming us, is supporting us, is bringing us closer to finding our our route into our place in the mosaic. We all need to be, I think, I suspect, maybe not you, but I need to be transformed, changed, grow up, mature, whatever, in order to really find ourselves in our role within the mosaic. We're all being, I, I think, all being drawn into, certainly if you're watching this or listening to this, being drawn toward our place in the mosaic. So you know, how much resistance is there? And how conscious are we of the resistance? Are we willing to become aware of the resistance? Are we willing to accept the resistance? Can we ask for help in accepting the resistance? and acknowledging it. And because the resistance is all part of the game. It's all part of the person we meet on the street or in the subway might be just in a place where it's like a jeweler's wheel. You know, you put all the rough rocks in the jeweler's wheel and you spin it around, probably using electricity most of the time these days, but spin it around the rocks bounce against each other and they knock off the rough edges. And your resistance may be what's needed to knock off a rough edge of somebody else and eventually you'll become less resistant. 
and particularly once you get it, that it's really more comfortable. Long run, it's more comfortable to be willing to be drawn into your place in the mosaic, to be willing to give up whatever is intruding in that process and what is that in you which is balking against the change. So asking for acceptance and asking for willingness, asking for easier access to all the resources you need to become an agent of transformation. All those ways of asking, and I had a thought that went just like that, and it was a great one. You would have loved it, and it went sliding right on by. Wanting helps. That can be a form of asking. Being willing to let our concept of what we need be modified, to let it become focused. Because when we get deeply enough into this work, we realize that you know, as one of my friends, this is the only game in town. This is what we want to be in our place in the mosaic. So to ask to let go of everything else. One of the, the tools which we're offering, and I say this often because it bears repetition, the tool which we, the Spark of Humanity, are offering to help this process is the Spark Practice, which will be having a series about maybe next year. But to be claiming our sparks as we are focusing, doing the work to transform them because they need to be transformed, and we know that, we're very clear on that, that that also inevitably is transforming us subtly. Subtly, not noticeably, but subtly and over time, markedly, it's transforming us. And so through that work, we are unaware, probably, jettisoning the defenses, the bafflement, the distortions that are getting in the way of our being drawn into our place within the mosaic. So the spark work, the spark practice, is fits right in with the living mosaic concept and suggestions. Some people have their own practice. They're not about to do any other practice, and that's fine. Or they can do both. Um, or all three. We're going to be talking about practice in a couple of weeks. But the, the idea that, that you have a way, you have the capacity to begin, you have the capacity to get clear about what you truly want, what will really make you feel satisfied or fulfilled? What is your true desire, your true need? Go deeper, 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 deeper. What do you think it is? Mm, let's look deeper than that. Mm, it's not that car. No, mm, it's not that boyfriend or girlfriend. You know, mm, it's not that house. It's not that job. Deeper, deeper, deeper. You can do that. You can ask to do that. You can ask for the support and the insight you need in order to do that honestly and clearly. And to get in touch with what I believe we each have, that hunger to be who we truly are. 
to be in our place in the mosaic, to be honest, to be functioning as part of this community being an essential and unique, unique part of this community with no judgment, no blame, no need to understand, no need to compare, just simply appreciating the wealth, the breadth, the richness of the community within the mosaic. Oh, there's someone right over there who totally disagrees with me on everything, on everything that I can think of or on everything that I value. And they're in the mosaic too. And they're essential. They're unique. They're essential. And I'm me. I don't have to be like them. They don't have to be like me. Wow. What a mind blower, right? So getting to that place, being willing to go to that place, asking, asking for the help we need in order to develop the spark practice as a habit so that when we encounter someone, we immediately, through our spark, connect with their spark of humanity. And that we're drawing up the resources we need in order to do that, even with difficult people. We can ask for that. We can ask for the concept, the perspective of the living mosaic as a living mosaic. Therefore, it wants to live. Therefore, it's sort of drawing us in because it does not, it needs us to, in order to be fully the solution. We can ask for that. And it doesn't just like my young friend's child. It does not require specific words. We don't need to have any vision or idea about what we're asking or who we're, what we're asking in terms of who are we asking of? What are we asking of? What's the, you know, we don't, we don't need to go there. We, we can ask the mosaic. We can just ask whatever we feel like asking. Um, just put it out there. Make it big. Don't keep it, don't let it be small. Just I want to, I want to find my place in the living mosaic. I want to be well nested in my role in the living mosaic. I please, I'm asking, I'm asking to find my role and to be in it fully so that I am knowing myself as being part of the solution with all the horror that is going on in this world and in this country. And given the environmental devastation in my neighborhood here too, with all that, my, my favorite response, I ask to be part of the solution because that gives me a constructive place of engagement so I can feel okay, I don't need to be blown overboard by the, all the horrors. I don't get a newspaper, but I go into the drugstore to get something, and there are the newspapers there, and I look at the headlines. I say, mm -hmm. help me be part of the solution. Just, it doesn't make any difference how tiny it is, how apparently inconsequential it is. We each have the capacity to be part of the solution. And we can ask for that. We can ask to be part of the solution, how we find our place as part of the solution. So thank you for joining me, joining us. And thank you, as always, to Orca Media for hosting us. And for everyone who's part of this Spark of Humanity network and the community that sustains this enterprise and keeps us going. And may you know what to ask for. And be willing to ask with your whole heart and gut and brain. Thank you for joining us.